In this movie, I just want to talk briefly about how you should handle errors in your production environment. So far, we've mostly been talking about what to do about errors in your development environment, which is where hopefully you'll get most of your errors. But sometimes errors do happen in production as well. We want to make sure we handle those in the best way possible. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that in your environment for production, that consider all requests local is set to false. We saw this before. We saw that for the development environment, it's always set to true. What this does is it shows us the error in the browser. So it gives us all of that debug information right there on the screen in the browser. But in production, we don't want to do that. We don't want our users to get all that valuable information about our application. We want to keep that concealed. So instead, we're going to want to show error pages that are custom tailored for them. And those error pages might just simply say something went wrong, but it's much better than showing them all of that application and debugging details. Rails comes with some built-in HTML error pages. And those are just simple HTML pages. In the public directory, you'll find the 404.html page for a page not found. You're probably familiar with 404 errors. There's also 500, which is when there's any kind of internal server error. If something really went wrong, that's probably the page that you're going to render. And then there's a third one, 422, which is probably not very familiar to you, for unprocessable entity. And that's really something that comes up when we start working with REST. That's really where that, that comes into play. For the most part, you're going to be using the first two, the 404 and the 500 page. Now, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind about these error pages. They exist in the public directory, not in your application directory. And that's because they're static HTML pages. You notice they end in .html. That means that we can't use Ruby code in them. We won't have access to any of our Rails helpers or to our templates layouts. It's just a single static HTML page that we're going to display to the user instead. That may have links that take you back to our application. Maybe there's still a basic navigation at the top of the page or something like that, but it can't rely on any of the rest of our application, the things that are in our app directory. It's just HTML. So I'll make sure that the user experience is appropriate and that they'll see a, a nice error page instead of seeing that debug information. But we also want to know as developers that something went wrong. We don't want to have to go back and periodically check our log files to find out all the errors that have been experienced. It's better if we can know about those errors right away. And the best way to do that is with something called exception notification. An exception is just another word for an error. So it's an error notification system. And the idea is to send email notifications to you whenever errors occur. It's ideal for your production environment. It's going to include all the information about the error, the request, the session, the environment, the backtrace, everything you're used to and it's all wrapped up in a gem. So if you go to Ruby Gems, you can look up more information about exception notification. If you want to use it, then you just add it to your gem file. Gem followed by exception underscore notification, bundle install to make sure that the gem is there, and then you'll just need to configure it using their configuration instructions. This is something that I add to every single one of the projects that I do, because if something goes wrong, I want to know about it right away so that I can jump right on top of it and fix the error. If I don't get an email, then I'll know the application is working and my users are not getting errors. Together, these error pages and this exception notification allows you to have all the details about the errors while not providing too much information to your end user.